In the first lecture, we talked about the contains duplicate problem, and we saw a couple different approaches to solve it. In order to compare algorithms, we need a rigorous way to analyze and talk about their complexity, how much time and space they take to run. In this lecture, we're going to develop some tools to do this, including the big O notation, a, ubiqui a, a ubiquitous way to speak about the complexity of an algorithm. Let's go back to the double for loop solution to the contains duplicate problem. In this solution, we iterated over each element AI of the array. And then to check if we had previously seen AI, we iterated over the array from 0 to i minus 1 to check if any of those elements were equal to AI. Our intuition is that this algorithm is wasteful and there should be a better way. Now let's see how we can argue this more rigorously. So here's that double for loop algorithm. Let's count how many operations this algorithm makes. To make our job easier, we are just going to take the number of comparisons, that is the number of checks, does array at index i equal array at index j, as a proxy of the running time. This is to simplify the analysis, and as this check is the main work done inside the loops. Certainly the number of times that we must perform this check, times the average time taken to perform this check, will be a lower bound on the running time of this algorithm. So for the analysis, let's also say that there's no duplicate in the input. This is the worst case for this algorithm because in this case, the outer for loop is going to have to run until completion. So let's look at how many comparisons we do in the inner loop depending on the value of the variable i of the outer loop. When i is 1, we just do one comparison. When i is 2, we do two comparisons, with the element at index 0 and with the element at, in, at, at index 1. In general, we do a comparison for each value of j from 0 to i minus 1. So that's i comparisons in total. So now i ranges from 0 to n minus 1, where n is the total number of elements in our vector. So the total number of comparisons we do is the sum of all the numbers in the right column. That is the sum of the integers from 1 to n minus 1. Do you know what this sum is? You can pause the video to think about it. There's a great story that when the mathematician Gauss was in grade school, the teacher asked the students to sum the, all the numbers from 1 to 100 in order to keep them busy so that the teacher could do something else. But as soon as the teacher had asked this question, Gauss replied with the answer, 5,050. And the story goes that Gauss immediately saw that you can equivalently view the sum as the sum of 50 pairs of numbers, where each pair sums to 101. So you pair up 1 with 100, that's 101. You pair up 2 with 99, 3 with 98, etc., all the way to 50 and 51. So you have 50 pairs of numbers that sum to 101, and 50 times 101 is 5,050. So that's a great story that I love to tell, uh, and how you can remember how to do this sum. Uh, let's see this in a little bit more detail. Uh, in this abstract case where we're just summing the numbers from 1 to n minus 1. Okay, so in that case, we can pair up the number at the beginning, the number at the end, 1 and n minus 1, those sum to n. Then we can pair up 2 and n minus 2, those again sum up to n. 3 and n minus 3 again sums up to n. And the only tricky part about this argument that you kind of have to remember is what happens when you get to the middle. And this is going to depend on if n minus 1 is even or odd. So if n minus 1 is even, then you know n minus 1 divided by 2 is an integer. 
and n plus 1 divided by 2 is also an integer. And then this is going to be the middle pair. And you see that, again, the number, these numbers sum up to n. So in this case, we have n minus 1 quantity divided by 2 many pairs, all of which sum to n. So the sum is n minus 1 times n divided by 2. Okay, so now let's do the case where n minus 1 is odd. Uh, in that case, then the, the very number in the middle is not going to have anything to be paired up with. Okay, And the number in the middle is just going to be n over 2. So the last pair we have is n minus 2 divided by 2, which is paired up with n plus 2 divided by 2. And then we have this extra term of n over 2. So in this case, the sum is n minus 2 divided by 2, which is our number of pairs, times n, plus n over 2. But when you add these up, the result is again the same as in the other case. It's just n minus 1 times n divided by 2. OK, so that's a nice way, uh, you know, if you forget the formula for it, what the sum is, you can just think about the story of Gauss and recreate it yourself. Okay, so in our double for loop, we make n minus 1 times n divided by 2 many comparisons, or roughly n squared divided by 2 comparisons. So now we've analyzed this algorithm. Um, this is how many comparisons that we're going to have to make in this worst case, where there is no duplicate, and we have to run through both for loops. And this gives us an analytical benchmark that we can try to beat when we look for better algorithms for the contains duplicate problem.